Today, we're gonna to show you how to edit baby photos. We're gonna take them to the next level, including adding a really special kind of fun glow around your subject that I wouldn't use for most other images, but for baby portraits, it seems appropriate. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. All right, hey guys, and welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace. Today, we're taking a look at this image here. Looking really good. I just want to clean it up. So getting started, the first thing I want to do, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. I've got these nice effects here with these clouds, but I've got some strings that are kind of giving away this effect. So we want to use generative fill to just kind of get rid of these strings. So we're going to go ahead and zoom out. I'll grab my marquee tool and we're just going to click and drag right around these strings here. Super, super easy to do. Just click and drag around all four of those. As you can see, they're all selected. We're going to go to generative fill right over here and then just click on generate. It's going to figure out what needs to go there. Basically just fill there so we can remove strings. So you can do this with product photography. Anytime you want to, you know, hide a string or an effect or something like that. Boom, super, super easy to do. Okay, next thing I want to do is expand our composition a little bit because the baby's just a little bit too close to the bottom here. I want some more room. So let's hit C for the crop tool. You can click right over here on crop. Okay, now over here where it says fill at the very top, make sure it says generative expand. Click on that. Generative expand. And then I'm going to zoom out. You can just click here on the bottom and then just go right down like that. Boom. Baby's going to be in the center. It's going to add all this information. Just click on this checkbox right up there on the top. It's going to generate all new information and fill this in at the bottom of our photo. So you can see, oh, beautiful. It even added some of that. Let's go ahead with this one for now. That's looking really good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is grab our marquee tool right over here. And I want to see if I can add more of these clouds. So generally, how generative fill works is that it will take information from your photo and then fill it in based on that. So we're just going to go ahead and make a couple of selections over here. Click on generative fill. And I'm just going to type in clouds. Now, it's probably going to generate some regular looking clouds, but it's probably also going to grab some of these cloud like images from my existing photo and generate based on that. Look at that. It did a really nice job. It just generated more clouds and they fit with my photo because that's the whole idea of like what generative fill does, right? It like it looks at your photo and tries to make something similar. All right. You can see we have a few different variations. You can just, you know, you can hit generate and it'll make even more of these, you probably know how generative fill works by now. It's kind of like the new favorite tool of everyone. So there we go, that looks pretty good. So already we're looking a lot better, but we need to do work with our subject. The subject needs to get a lot brighter here. Okay, let's go back to our layers. You can see if we go back in time, this is our base layer. Then we just removed these strings and then added more to the bottom and then added some clouds. Okay, but now what I wanna do is work on our subject. You can do this in so many different ways. Kind of my favorite way these days is to use Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop, which is basically all the same tools we get in Lightroom, all the masking, all the exposure, all that stuff. So here's how you do it. It's so, 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 so cool. Okay, first thing we need to do is I need to create a new layer. So let's go ahead to create a new layer. And on this layer, I basically need it to be a snapshot of everything that I see, right? Because I need something that I can work on in Adobe Camera Raw. So I can't just use a blank layer. It's not going to do anything. Okay, so how do we get a snapshot of everything that we see onto our new layer? Well, we're going to go to image right up here and then down to where it says apply image. Boom. There we go. Apply image. And what you can see already, it's filled in our thumbnail. It basically just takes a snapshot of all your existing layers and then puts them on your new layer. You don't even have to change any settings. This is good. Just hit OK. Image, apply image. And then we have our baby. Fantastic. Now, we're going to be using a filter. OK, we're going to go to filter and then down to camera raw filter. But check it. Every time you use a filter in Photoshop, every single time, I really recommend using a, a smart object first. So go to layer, down here to smart objects, and over to convert to a smart object, okay? We want our layer to be a smart object before we use a filter. That way we can change the filter at any time. Super important. So convert to a smart object, boom. You can see it's now a smart object icon. We have our smart object right there, and we're ready for our filter. So let's go to filter, 
and then down here to camera raw filter. Now, if you've ever used Lightroom, uh, it's basically the exact same thing. You have Lightroom built in to Photoshop. Who knew, right? Pretty cool. Like you can adjust your exposure. You can adjust all, all everything you can do in Lightroom. Okay, what we're gonna do is jump right over here to our masking, just like in Lightroom, right? Okay, <laughs> we're gonna start by going to a radial gradient. I'm gonna click on a radial gradient. Okay, we're gonna click here in the center and drag out just like that. We wanna make our baby brighter, right? We wanna draw more attention, okay. So within this mask, within this radial mask, we're gonna go to our exposure and we're just gonna bump up our exposure just a little bit and let's take that shad uh, sorry, the shadow value and we're gonna bump that up as well. And I can even click here and move this around. All right, that's looking really good. Now I want the baby's face to be a little bit lighter as well. So we're gonna do the same thing. Let's go to create a new mask. Boom, let's go down here to radial gradient. Same, same, same. Okay, let's click and drag out from the center. You want these to be like, you know, a little bit larger than just the area you want to affect. And then you want to make sure your feathering is set all the way to 100, right? And that just keeps this effect looking very natural. Okay, let's go down here. We're going to bring our exposure up just a little bit. That's just going to be on the baby's face. And then again, our shadow level. Okay, fantastic. That's looking much, much better. And you can see I can even move that around as well. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, maybe we wanna brighten up the baby's feet and stuff like that. So we're gonna create a new mask and I'm gonna go to select subject. Okay, it's gonna select out our subject there. It selected this and stuff like that, but whatever, I can minus that out from this selection. Very easy. Okay, so we're gonna go to select subject and then here let's just go to, we'll bring it just the exposure up. This is gonna be mostly our baby and our shadow levels there. Fantastic. And if I want to bring that up a little bit more, then I can just minus it out from where it's a little bit too bright, right? So we'll go to subtract and then I'll just go to a brush. Okay, we're going to subtract a brush here. Uh, let's go ahead and bring our feathering, bring our flow. So I'm literally just subtracting. I started with my select subject, I made it brighter, and then we're sub subtracting out with this brush. So I'm just going to paint, you know, over anywhere that it's. Uh, you know, maybe just a tiny bit too, too bright. So let's just, we can turn this off and on to see, you know, how's that look before and the after. All right, if we want to add a little bit, we hold Alt or Option there. There we go. So there, I think that's looking really, really good. So basically all this we've done in Adobe Camera Raw, just using a couple radio filters. Could you do this with curves and adjustment layers and masks in Photoshop? Of course you could, uh, but I love Camera Raw. It's so great. Okay, let's hit okay. Boom. Now we can turn this smart filter off and on at any time because remember we made it a smart object first, right? So we just turn that off and on. Super, super easy to do. And look how much better our picture is looking already. Now, if you wanna get back to your Camera Raw filter, just double click right here in Camera Raw, like right here, because we made a smart object and you were using smart filters, okay? That's key. Gotta make a smart object first. But then check it. We can just go back to our masking here in Adobe Camera Raw. And I still have these masks I can turn off and on at any time. And I can, you know, go in and adjust the, you know, if I wanna make it a little bit less bright, I can do that too. And it's gonna update here. Okay, just a heads up on that. So, already we're looking so much better. I mean, like literally, you know, this is, what, what do we start with? Just like, let's just turn all these layers off here. Boom, 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 boom. Turn all these layers off. There we go. We started with this, right? And uh, boom, now we're here. So the last thing I wanna do is, we're just gonna make the baby skin a little bit, like, uh, we're gonna add kind of like a glow to this. Uh, and this is, again, something that I wouldn't do on a almost any type of other photo, but with babies, it makes sense. So let's go to select, and then we're gonna go to subject. We're gonna just select our subject out. It's okay if it selects, you know, a little bit of the hammock and stuff like that. And then on this layer, because we already have our selection active, I'm gonna hit Control or Command J, and that's just gonna duplicate the baby to a new layer. Like if I zoom out, you can kind of see if I use my move tool, it's just the baby on a new layer. So I got I got duplicates of the baby now. I got baby doubles. Okay, now this layer, we're also gonna make a smart object too because we're gonna use a blur filter. So let's go to this layer. We're gonna go to layer down to smart object and then convert to smart object. Boom, super important, okay? And then we're gonna apply a blur. So let's go to filter, we're gonna go to blur, and let's go to Gaussian blur. So this just literally adds a blur to the baby. 
boop, 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 something like that looks good. Don't worry about this number so much because uh, we made it a smart object first. So if I need to change it, you just double click right here on Gaussian Blur and you can like change this at any time, okay? So don't worry about this number. Okay, now let's go ahead and we're gonna change our blend mode from normal down to, let's go to lighten, boom. So we have this glow effect. Uh, it just looks weird now because it's super visible in the shadows as well. So we need to hide this layer in the shadows of the baby. Okay, I know it's a little bit like, what are you talking about? We're gonna use blend if to do that, okay? It looks good like right over here and stuff like that, it looks good, but just this area looks weird, right? Like with the, the like shadow areas for the eyelids, that still needs to look like an eyelid. You can't have it look like this, it's gonna, it's just super weird. Okay, so we're gonna double click right here on this layer, boop, boop, and get to your layer style dialog, okay? You can also go to layer, down to layer style, there we go, and over to blending options, okay? You can do either one, just get to your layer style dialog. Fantastic. Now, on this layer style dialog, what we need to do is here where it says blend if, we have a current layer and an underlying layer. I wanna make this blurred version of the baby invisible where the underlying layer is dark, right? So I still see the detail from the baby, right? So for blend if, we use the underlying layer where it's dark. Don't forget, you gotta hold Alt or Option here, and that separates these into two different sliders. Alt or Option, separate those into two sliders, and then you can click and drag, there we go, and it's gonna become invisible where the underlying layer is darker, okay? So you can see how, right, we have, you know, not looking good, and then we bring this from left over to the right, and then all of a sudden we see all the detail from the baby, and it looks really good. It looks way, way better, okay? Let's hit okay there. So that's the key, you gotta blend if and make sure it's not visible in the darks. And then just turn this off and on and you get this nice little glow effect on the skin of the baby, but everything still looks good, right? Now, check it, you can still double click right here where it says Gaussian Blur and then just change this blur, right? Like if I don't want as much of effect, I don't have to. If I want more of effect, I can get more of an effect there. So I'm literally just like dialing how much of this like glow, you know, baby glow, kind of makes it look like a like an illustration a little bit more. I don't know, it makes it look a little bit less like a photograph and more, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to say it. It looks like a painting or something like that. Uh, it just looks nice. Uh, you know what, it, it looks right. By the way, if you like that idea of like adding a glow, you can totally do that. Let's just create a new layer, okay? You can do that with your entire image. If you wanted to do, for instance, a new layer, I could go to image and then down to apply image again. Okay, very good. So I just applied it to a whole new layer. I could go to select and then down to color range and then I can select like the lights of my image. Okay, I'm just like literally using the eyedropper to select the light colors of my image and hit okay. And then I hit, and hit control or command J to just duplicate those lights to a new layer. This layer I can delete in the meantime, okay? So this is literally just the layer that I duplicated lights. Like if I moved it, it's just the light areas of the photos, right? Okay, now I could go to layer, I could go to smart objects and then convert that to a smart object, okay? And then a filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. There we go, create a nice Gaussian blur. And then I can change my blend mode to lighten. There we go. And you can see that that gives me kind of like that same idea it's just adding that glow to everywhere and I can still make it invisible where the underlying layers are darker with blend if here. Just the same like I did with the baby, but now I'm literally doing that on the entire image. And you can hit controller command J to duplicate that, double click on your Gaussian blur, give it even more of a Gaussian blur, and then hit controller command J on that one. Let's just group all those together, you know, cause I'm adding like a lot of, a lot of blur there. And I can click on my layer mask and then you know, if I wanna layer mask that away from my baby, I can do that too, right? So I'm just adding kind of like a lot of, a lot of glow to the image. And all these layers, keep in mind, they're all set to a lighten blend mode. How cool is that? I am really happy with this image. This is the type of stuff, you know, like, again, you get to do stuff like this uh, with like baby images and whatnot that you wouldn't normally do, you know, with, with another traditional photograph. But having this like kind of like nice glow over top of everything I, I think really works. So here's that before image, okay? So we can really get a sense of what we did today. 
Uh, you can see the baby's just way too dark. We have all that hidden and the composition could be improved. And here's our after. We just have a nice, beautiful uh, baby glow image. And then keep in mind all these like glow effects, you can turn them off and on and you can decide how much or how little you'd like those effects to apply. Boom, love it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up because it really helps out the channel. And if you want to get more free tutorials, click on that subscribe button. We'll send you more free tutorials, Photoshop, photography, Lightroom, all the above. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.